This week, Saturday on DR Sports, we're going to be hosting a very special watch along. It's UFC 286, and we're going to be doing a watch along to the big fight. It is Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman. You've got to come and check it out live here on DR Sports. I'm going to be hosting it with our brand new MMA host, Zaki. We'll be giving you the lowdown on the fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, easy, bro. You ready? What's all that? What's all this? You said you're gonna get stuck in. We're gonna no, no, I ain't signed up for that. No, no, no. What do you mean? That's, that's what we said we're gonna do. Okay, we'll worry about Robbie in a sec. But listen, make sure you join us on Saturday evening from nine o'clock, UFC 286, Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards, the trilogy fight. Who's gonna win? We'll find out on Saturday. Make sure you join us. Robbie, I swear we're gonna go live. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm tapping, I'm tapping. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zaki Solosho and I'm here with Modestus Bukowskis and he's recently made his return back to the UFC. How are you doing Modestus? Doing very well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me here, bro. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for being here in our first MMA podcast on DR Sports. I think it's a pretty big deal, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I definitely feel the honor here, mate, 100%. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, right, just let's get straight into it. How has it been? Uh, kind of on the back of that win against Tyson Pedro, um, you know, making your comeback and it being a successful comeback. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling absolutely amazing, obviously. Um, you know, I, I got like a very massive high, obviously, after the fight, like sort of straight after, obviously, there was a lot of emotions uh, going into that fight and then afterwards. And then, yeah, like I, it was kind of nice as well. Like, you know, I still had like a day in, in Australia kind of to, just to chill and like, actually like soak everything in and, and soak in, in the win and everything. But, you know, me me as an athlete and me as a competitor and the person that I am, I'm always wanting to just get straight back to work and get straight straight ready for, for, for the next opportunity and, uh, you know, the next fight and, you know, whatever's next on the agenda. Gender. So I've kind of just cut as soon as I got back home, I was like, you know, I had a bit of like a week of like kind of a little bit more of a chill, chill vibe. And then I was like, I need to get back into training. I need to help my training partner, Will Curry, who's also going to be fighting for the Cage Warriors middleweight title. So, you know, I've just been staying active, staying busy, staying in shape because I want to be ready if there's anything that comes up, you know, short notice, whatever. Um, so yeah, man, like I say, it's all systems go, you know, well, once we keep this train going, we just want to keep it rolling. I hear that, I hear that. And let's, let's rewind a little bit because uh, just to bring uh, some of the fans up to speed, uh, what was your comeback like? What, what, what happened? You know, let, let, why don't you talk us a little bit through um, what happened in your first uh, kind of rodeo, if you like, in the UFC and, mm. and how you got back there? Yeah, so um, I signed with the UFC at the very beginning of 2020. Um, you know, it was like obviously an absolutely amazing experience just, just to get that call and like everything that I'd been, you know, thinking about and dreaming about just came into fruition. I had four fights uh, in my first run. I won my debut. I got the 50 grand bonus, which I then gave to my parents, which was something that I actually wrote on my, uh, on my like sort of vision board. Um, which, which was obviously a very, very touching moment for me to be able to do that finally, to, to show them a bit of love after all the crap that they had to deal with uh, with me on a, on a daily basis. Um, but you know, I, I had, uh, yeah, exactly. So I had, I had, I had, I had the, first, uh, I had the first, first fight, which went obviously to plan. And then I had three straight losses after that. Uh, one of which was against Oleg Shechuk, um in Vegas, which was a very close split decision loss where a lot of people thought I'd won that fight. So, you know, uh, things didn't really go my way in, in the first UFC run. I kind of, you know, I rushed to fight Jimmy Crute, who's a top level contender. Um, you know, then I had, you know, Oleg Shechuk, who again is very experienced in the octagon himself. And then for my last fight, uh, I fought Khalil Roundtree, who was, that was a resurgent Khalil Roundtree, which I thought he was going to be the same as he was before. And he wasn't, he came out absolutely all guns blazing. And um, yeah, I, I went into that fight actually with a very serious knee injury. Uh, I didn't tell anyone, but 10 weeks out from that fight, I had an MRI from the doctor. I had two meniscus tears and 75% of the ACL was torn uh, in my left knee. Uh, plus the MCL was, uh, the MCL, sorry, on the inside was uh, chronically worn as well. So I had a very serious knee injury going into the Khalil fight already. So I wow. guess what happened in the fight didn't exactly help. <laughs> yeah, because thinking about it now, like that, 
irrespective of going into the fight with a knee injury like that, that strike that he, um, that is like the yeah, teeth, psychic, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that would have done probably the same amount of damage anyway, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I was very fortunate because the conversation I had with the doctor before, I, he, I said, will I be able to fight? You know, um, he said, look, obviously you'll be able, because he's seen me before and he's, he's sort of, uh, you know, he's, he, he, he's um, sort of seen what my knee, like what sort of the structure is and everything. So he said, look, the muscles around your knee are strong enough to be able to hold it in place. But that's all he said, is to hold it in place. He said, would you be able to, will you be able to compete? Yes, uh, but it would need to get sorted straight after. And obviously I went into that fight, you know, thinking, especially since, you know, thinking, oh, will we see the same Khalil round we've been seeing before? I, I reckon I could handle it. So I took the fight and unfortunately it didn't go my way. Um, you know, I got that psychic to the knee, very well timed, very well placed, fair play to him. You know, he did what he had to do. It's kill or be killed in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so shortly after that, you know, I had a very extensive knee surgery, um, which is now 100% okay. You know, I had synthetic grafts put in and, you know, but the actual, uh, psychic itself caused obviously the meniscus tore off the bone ACL was hanging on they said it looked like two floss MCL completely torn Whoa. so it was they basically essentially did a full knee reconstruction but they added synthetic ligaments in order to make it that much stronger which is why I'm able to compete today right um, I went for a very dark, dark time the operation uh, itself was was very painful it was very difficult um, then you know I I, I I you know I turned to drinking you know in my room basically just not knowing what's going to happen next. I got very depressed. You know I couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, as as much as I tried to stay positive and motivated, I was trying every day trying to do, you know vlog stuff like get content. I tried to you know work on my physio like really just trying to stay positive. And then you know about four weeks after the operation, I ended up getting the call that I'd been cut from the UFC and. Uh, that was the, an even bigger blow, you know? And then, like I said, that's where I went into a real like spiral downwards to uh, probably the lowest point I've ever been in my life, wow. you know? Thinking that there's no money, uh, I'm, I'm literally, I'm humiliated, you know? Uh, everyone, turn, a lot of people turned their back on me. You know, it showed me who the real, real people were, who, who the people who really support me and who really love me are all about. And then, uh, and then, yeah, like, you know, I had, I had, I had to learn a lot of lessons from that and it was, it was horrible. Uh, but day by day, we, we slowly made our comeback, you know. Um, the whole time I knew that I was gonna come back, as upsetting as it was, um, I knew that this story could not end here, you know. Mm. Uh, for, for, this, for, for this whole story about me and my life, I've, I've always faced adversity. No matter what it's been, I've always had really tough, dark, bad situations. This being the worst, this being like literally, <laughs> I, can't, I can't actually think of any worse situation in my life, but I knew if I could do it before, I could do it again. You know, it happened before essentially in my career, but in on a much smaller scale. Mm. Now it's on a much larger scale, you know, with, with more eyes on you and, and stuff like that. A lot of people thought I was never gonna come back, but luckily I had amazing physio, amazing surgeons, and uh, day by day we just built our way back by about March, April time, uh, so it was about uh, six months after the uh, operation, I was back to being able to train like properly, mm -hmm. you know? So, and then slowly from there, we're trying to decide what we wanted to do next and, you know, and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a horrendous time, but I was very thankful to have, you know, the loving and supporting people that I did have uh, to sort of guide me through the whole process. And uh, yeah, it was just about trying to make sure I tick off small little goals every single day, you know? One thing that really stuck out to me was that I had to, I wiped off everything off my whiteboard, my vision board, because I thought, you know, the magic's done, it's over. I'm not, I'm not you know, the, this, the, the shit ain't working anymore, basically. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but like I say, we, we, we made it back. As hard as it was, uh, we, we got through it. And, and do you find that now you're back to using your vision board? Oh yeah, 100%. And that, now everything I'm writing on the vision board is coming true again, you know what I mean? So I think this is another lesson that, you know, certain things may not go your way, but you've always got to stay true to you. Got, you've got to remember that this is a process and uh, you've got to remember the end goal is still the end goal. The, the path, you know, isn't, isn't so straight, you know what I mean? It's always going to have dips and turns and curves and, you know, and, and different things that get thrown at you. It's just how you handle it. The, the things that I learned, the lessons, this, 
journey for me had to be done this way. It couldn't be done any other mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You know, God made me have these lessons because that's what's going to help me to achieve my goal in the long run. Yeah. You know, all the goals that I want to achieve, the big time goals can only be achieved through this hardship that I had to face. And I truly believe that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely fully using the, the, the vision board again today and uh, it will be utilized for, for, for all my life, 100%. Amazing. So then let's, let's talk a little bit about vision and kind of looking forward. What do you see for the next uh, year or so? Are there, are there fights that you have your eye on? Um, uh, what, what, what are your thoughts moving forward? Um, to be honest, there's not one particular fight that I have in mind. I just know that I wrote on my vision board that by 31 years old, I would have the UFC belt. I'm 29 now, so that gives me a two year time frame uh, to, 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 to make that happen. But you know, I definitely feel like I could get that Jimmy Crute fight back. Um, you know, he's an amazing athlete and a, and, and, and a great guy. He is a really good guy. Um, you know, I understand that, you know, rematches are very, are very rare unless, you know, certain situations and stuff like that. You, you know, who knows, maybe the Khalil fight will happen again. Um, but yeah, I just want to pick them off one by one, pick off the guys in the division. Now, um, th there's, there's one straight road to, to, to the belt. You keep winning, you keep putting on performances, you'll get that shot. So that's essentially what has to be done. Um, there's always going to be new talent flowing in. There's always going to be guys younger than you, especially now for me. I used to be the young guy. Now I'm kind of like the older guy, you know, even at 29. So, um, yeah, and, you know, uh, the light heavyweight division, everyone says, oh, it's not that deep. And, it, and yeah, it's true. It's not that deep, but it is slowly getting deeper. And obviously, you know, more guys are coming in, especially from contender series. Now it's getting filled up and it's like, okay, now we've got some interesting match matchups that can be made. And uh, it makes me very excited for what's to come. Brilliant. And, and, and looking, yeah, because I think it's getting deeper. Um, and looking at kind of the top of the division, uh, what are your, who have you got your eyes on in terms of stylistically? Are there, is there anyone in particular? Obviously, I mean, I don't know who the champion really, uh, it's hard to say who the champion is. Is it Jamal Hill? Is it um, Yuri Prohaska? You know, um, both very interesting looking fights for you, actually. But obviously, I'm from a striker, from a striking fan's perspective, I'm looking at your matchup potentially with Yuri Prohaska down the line and thinking, wow, that is an absolute bang. Oh, 100%. Both those guys are, are very beatable. Um, you know, guys like Anka Live as well. Um, Blahovic, so who knows how long he's going to be in the game for. Um, you know, the Rakic when he comes back from surgery. So yeah, there's some very interesting matchups that are going to be had. Uh, there's going to be a lot of strategy involved with those. But yeah, of course, they're going to be very explosive matchups. But yeah, I've already visualized fighting these guys. Um, I know that I'm ready uh, and able to fight the top guys of the division uh, when it gets to that point. You know, obviously, you've got to take your time. You've got to build up your confidence and, 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 your, and your ring time, uh, essentially. But yeah, 100%, those, those guys are definitely well within my sights. And just outside of the kind of uh, uh, sizing people up, what, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, wild characters like Prohaska? Yeah, I mean, look, he, he, he's clearly got a formula that works for him. You know, he's got that, that crazy, wild, like almost samurai type, uh, you know, and that works for him. And that's great for him. But at the end of the day, I've also built some, some certain uh, mental things, especially after this injury, that's going to make me very dangerous also. Uh, at the end of the day, look, that works for him and that's great. And, and you've got to have, look, I'm a crazy character myself. You know what I mean? I like to do certain weird things or, or you know, I, I, like, I like to party and do, do, do certain things. Yeah. Um, you know, which would make me sort of stand out and be a bit more eccentric than the average Joe. But, uh, but you know, th this, this is why everything is so interesting. And, you, you know, this is why the light heavyweight division itself is so interesting. And this is why fighting is so interesting, seeing these characters face off against each other. Do you know what I mean? But um, listen, I think mentally I'm at the strongest I've ever been. So uh, fighting any one of these guys, I'll be in, in, in the best mental place possible. Brilliant, brilliant. It sounds like it as well. I, I can, you know, I'm, I'm getting that vibe. My man. Uh, and dude, you've, you, you've trained with John Jones. Uh, you must be happy for his recent win. Yeah, oh, 100%. I've, I've always backed him. I think he's a tremendous athlete. You look very good at heavyweight, still switching stances, still explosive. And obviously his wrestling was like a massive factor against Garn. Um, it, it definitely played to his advantage. And uh, yeah, he, he seems to take, he seemed to have taken a bit of a turn in his life. Um, or at least in front of the camera, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, nah, he, he, he definitely is a, a very good guy. You know, he's a stand-up guy, a tremendous athlete. He's got good people around him. So of course, the success that I see for him is, is, is absolutely amazing. I hope it continues.
Brilliant. And uh, you train now in uh, Albuquerque with them at Jackson Wink, which for me is, you know, is, is an MMA institution <laughs> in terms of the fighters that have gone through there. I mean, one of my personal favorite fighters of all time is uh, Carlos Condit. Um, and, you know, you've also got people like GSP who've been through there, yeah. Andre Olofsky, you know. Um, who, who did you really enjoy kind of training with when you were out there? Um, and, you know, I'd love to hear some stories. Yeah, this, no, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> well, as you all know, I trained with John Jones uh, quite a lot. I remember the first time I, I met him, obviously I came in, you know, he came up to me, shook my hand, I introduced myself and, and you know, obviously I had massive respect. I was almost very, I was very starstruck when I first met him. Um, and, you know, it, it was very nice that I'd already been there previously and I'd actually trained out with Arlo Andre Olovsky the first time round and we did a load of rounds together. He actually paid for me to stay an extra week just to help him with, with his own training. So that was amazing that I got that experience. But then obviously word goes around the gym. John Jones already knew who I was when I, when I walked into the gym or at least heard of me. Um, and then we, we end up getting rounds together. We ended up, you know, um, uh, build, building a bit of a friendship and, and you know, obviously like uh, we, we, we were training partners, do you know what I mean? We'd literally spar each other all the time. So it was amazing. His wrestling is on an absolute another level. And uh, obviously as evidently shown by his performance against Garn, but it already at that point, it was freaking next level. And I was only 22. This guy was, I think 27 or, or close to 28. So he was uh, very much within his prime uh, at the time. Um, you could see why he's so good, you know? You can see why he's the greatest of all time. He's very methodical about everything. I think this was at the time when he was trying to sort of rehab himself and not party as much and stuff like that. Um, you know, he was kind of like, you know, he stuck to himself. He, 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 he was really focused and dialed in at training sessions. You know, he has a bit of a playful side, but you can see he was just a lot more focused around the time because this was his fight leading up to his OSP fight. So he was supposed to fight Cormier and then, then it got changed and, and stuff like that. And it, it was nice for, for the coaches to see my skill set and, 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 you know, to want to utilize me as, as his training partner. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot, of, a lot of amazing things from him, you know what I mean? But you could see there's a bit of a darkness to him, you know? As much as he's an amazing guy, a very nice guy, uh, uh, you know, beautiful character, uh, he has a bit of a darkness which does come out and it does come out in training a little bit. And um, do you know what? I think that's what makes him so good because when he needs to turn it on, he can turn it on. And this is something that I've only just learned at 29 years old. Um, I didn't even learn it then. I kind of was still, oh, the nice guy, you know, oh, yeah, you know, like humble, polite, this, that. But then you realize you, you, you do need to have this, this side to you where um, it's almost a viciousness, you know, and you could definitely see that. Uh, I remember one time um, we were, spy I was on antibiotics because I just had to, I, I was on staff or I just was healing from staff. So obviously my cardio wasn't the best. I just sparred two massive heavyweights, yeah, like 250 pounds, like going punch for punch, blow for blow, trying to defend takedowns, you know, strike with them. Um, so I just done two, I was dead. Antibiotics, I was absolutely gone. John Jones was in the cage, he goes, come on, let's do a round. I was like, okay, I'll put everything I can for, for this round. Then, uh, then, then after that round finished, now nah, let's do another one. I was like, oh my God, now I've got to do another one. I had to do another round. That wasn't enough. He needs another round. So I had to go in there and do a third round with him when I was absolutely gone. And uh, yeah, by the end of it, like I was literally almost in tears because I was just so, I was so tired. Like I, I was literally, and, and he, he, you know, he put it on me and uh, uh, you know, and, and it is what it is. He, he, he definitely showed me a lot of love though. You know, he, he definitely took care of me as well in terms of like, you know, showing me the ropes, teaching me techniques. Um, I learned a lot of good techniques from, from him, um, even just to be part of his like, kind of his clique, like in a way, like to, to, for him to recognize me, acknowledge me, it was a massive thing. Cause like I said, this guy's my idol, do you know what I mean? He's, he's like my, he's like a superstar to me. So to have that sort of experience was amazing. But like I said, that's the, that's the darkness, the viciousness coming out, you know? But I had a lot of rounds with him. You know, I definitely had my, uh, my good moments as well, but it's, it's just training at the end of the day. You know, um, when, the thing that matters is what you do on the day. That's what has also changed for me as well, is what I've realized is it doesn't matter what the hell you do beforehand. You could be, you could be partying and doing whatever the fuck you want uh, for 10 weeks leading up to a fight, but what, it depends what you do on the day. If your card is on point and everything's on point, you win the fight. The, the guy who's been working his ass off for 10 weeks could equally lose, do you know what I mean? Which has, has happened to me before, you know? So um, you, obviously you want to tip the scales in your favor as much as possible, but um, 
yeah, but like, like, like I say, it was just amazing being around him, talking with him, chilling with him, you know, uh, obviously training and stuff. Andre Olovsky was a really cool guy. There's some other heavyweights that were really good as well that, that, that were there. Carlos Condit? Carlos Condit was there. I didn't get to train with him uh, in, in, in particularly, but uh, obviously got to see him around and everything. Yeah. You know, uh, Donald Cerrone was there at the time. Of course, yeah. Um, Phil Horse, who's now in, in, in the UFC. I had a couple of good scraps with him. Uh, ben Reiter, who was in Bellator. Oh, yeah. uh, who was uh, the guy from um, one of the lighter divisions? Oh, oh, his name escapes me. Do you know what, Yair Rodriguez was actually there oh, really? for, uh, oh, for a little wow. bit when I was there. Rose Namajunas was also there a little bit. So there, there was a load of different, uh, or I think Young Jacek was there. So there was a load of different athletes wow. that had come in and out of the camp, you know, throughout the time that I was there. Yoel Romero came there at one oh, point. Oh, wow. You know, so it, it, it was mad. Like, it, were, it was really mad. I, I, ju I just remember it was, uh, it was a, hell of ex a hell of an experience. There was a lot of crazy characters that came in through there. You know, a lot of nights out where, you know, had had some uh, que questionable endings and, 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 and stuff like that. So I want to hear about that. <laughs> it, 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 was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a mad one. I think I'll be going on a little bit too long to, to explain all of it. But honestly, uh, you know, no like I say, we're fighters. We're we're, yeah. we're absolute nut jobs, you know, and and you know that's where obviously crazy stories can can come about. But yeah, it it was a, an amazing experience. But um, you know, I definitely think that's what sort of built built me uh, to who I am today. And and do you know what that really gave me? It it showed me that I can compete at the highest level because I'm competing with these guys. Yeah, of course, I was 22, you know, inexperienced in a lot of areas of my game, but I was ready to work, ready to put in what I needed to do. But, you know, to be able to go out there and like, you know, give these guys things that, you know, that, that they want to learn and they want to, you know, and, and build friendships because they, they, they realize how good you are. It just shows me, it's like, if John Jones is giving you props, that means you are, you know, UFC caliber, and or, or at least if you weren't then, you will be. Yeah. And you know, it's finally it's come to fruition. So I'm very thankful for that experience. Brilliant. And eventually, obviously, you had to make your return back to the UK. Uh, the UK MMA scene, you know, on, on we were a few a few days out from this uh, rematch of Kamaru Usman and uh, Leon Edwards. Uh, what, what what are your thoughts on uh, how it currently is, how it's how it's grown, and um, where, where do you see the UK MMA scene uh, going in the next few years? Well, it just shows you that you don't need to go to these fancy gyms to, uh, you know, out in the States anymore. It, it used to be like that. You had to go to the States to get the training or to get the appropriate training partners and training, but now you don't need to. Look, Leon Edwards has done it all from his from his home in Birmingham, you know what I mean? And you've got guys like Nathaniel Wood, again, doing it all from GB Top Team. You've got myself doing it all from my dad's gym and BST, you know? So, you know, it just shows that, you know, we, we've got... Uh, We've got a stable of an amazing talent and fighters and the coaching has really gone up. The, the, the level of coaching is, is, is now at a very high level. We can wrestle, we have got jiu-jitsu. You know, before there was such a massive discrepancy in skill sets between the nations and now it's not so, not so vast. Yeah, of course, because wrestlers in, in America, they start from very young and you know, they got it through and their school system for sport, I think is a lot better than ours. Um, in, 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 in a lot of ways, but, um, and they definitely build more athletes just because of their school system. I would know, because I went to school there for two years, actually, funny enough. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, like the state of MMA now in the UK, they're also seeing, I think when you see someone else do it and you get the hope, you know, like Leon Edwards becoming champion, you know, everyone gets that hope and gets that sense of like, you know, oh my gosh, well, if he can do it, well, that means I can do it with the same thing. So it just makes everyone more motivated, everyone more inspired, everyone more willing to accept and learn things from the coaches as well. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, within the next couple of years, you're going to be seeing more champions, myself included. So, really? you know, uh, yeah. I think there's, there's a lot, a stable of amazing guys, a lot of great guys coming through Cage Warriors. Another guy I would like to mention, obviously, is uh, Will Curry. Uh, he's fighting for the middleweight title. He will be in the UFC soon. He was in my corner, absolutely shouting mad obscenities to, to, <laughs> I I to, to, to me during the fight. You know, <laughs> even getting mentioned off the commentators. Yeah. But um, yeah, and he, you know, he 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 does everything with passion, and, and you know, he's a really good guy, and you know, he's a very close friend of mine. So uh, you know, really? like I say, there's there's a lot of great guys coming up. So the UK MMA scene, trust me, it's it's making waves for sure. Yeah, and. Kind of going back to that point about uh, the school system, you know, being very different to how uh, the US is, where in the US it's almost like it's ingrained the kind of the wrestling spirit, you know, mm -hmm. you, you do get, there's opportunities to pick that up, where here there's not really that uh, opportunity. Would you like to see more of that in the UK school system? Um, 
I mean, I think with the with the gyms now, like you know, the, there seems to be more wrestling available to people. I would like to see that, but it would be have to be a dramatic makeover of of the actual whole schooling system. I, I mean, listen. I'm talking that from a standpoint of obviously because the sports that I do aren't available. Obviously, I, I bet you it's different for football. I bet you it's different for for uh, you know cricket and other things where they probably do have a set you know set, set pieces on how to make a name for yourself in those particular sports. But yeah, I think they do need to branch out, especially in the MMA world. You know, there needs to be wrestling in schools. I think. But there's not enough coaches, you know. I've, I think that's another really hard thing to come by in the UK is that there's not enough wrestling coaching within the school system. So it would make it very difficult. There's so many coaches available in the U in the US that you know, obviously because that's one of the one of their main sports. So it'd be very hard to transfer that to the UK and get more of those coaches in there because in Europe they they start things from very young. So. Um, I'm not sure if they will even be able to incorporate that. Just judging, obviously, I'm speaking about it right now, but I don't even see that in the next 10 years, you know. Uh, but obviously, within the MMA gyms and the MMA community, people are going to be able to learn very good skill sets that they need to have in the cage. So um, that's where I think they'll make up for the lack of wrestling in the school system. Yeah, and it's not, it's not just really about the cage, is it? I guess, I mean, from, from my perspective, uh, you know, as a jiu-jitsu uh, grappler, obviously I'm just a blue belt, um, and I have been for a long time, <laughs> too long. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, young people doing jiu-jitsu and, you know, kind of um, uh, if and when I have the opportunity to have children, you know, I, I would get them on the mats as soon as yeah, possible, yeah. you know. Do, do you kind of feel like that yeah, as well? Yeah, 100%. I, I, I think if, if one thing, there are a hell of a lot of jiu-jitsu coaches out there. So I think they should definitely get jiu-jitsu into, into schools. Um, you know, mm. I, I think that would definitely help a lot with the bullying, a lot, a lot of, you know, teach kids how to be humble, teach kids how to overcome adversity, that, you know, that you have to keep going uh, even when things don't seem to be going your way. You know, it would teach a lot of valuable lessons. And yeah, I, d I definitely think uh, it would stop a lot of crime, a lot of violent crime as well, um, you know, because everything stems from your childhood. You know, you need to be able to control that and, and, and learn how to, to, to come through that. But I just think it would just make more more humble, humble kids and about respect as well, you know. And and imagine if you had all that instilled from a young age, you know, it would make, I think it would genuinely make the world a, a, a much better place, or especially the UK a much better place. So, uh, yeah, I definitely think they need to introduce it. Just because, like, where the difference is where there's not the many wrestling coaches, there's a hell of a load of jiu-jitsu coaches. So, uh, and a lot of guys being past knowledge, becoming black belts. So, I definitely think they need to incorporate that for sure. Yeah, no, it, it's hard to argue with that. I yeah. feel like it would it would help a lot, especially with things like knife crime in, in London and stuff, you know, just, just challenge that energy you know well for, this for is it your, your your violent energy and your aggressive energy needs to put in be put into a different outlet and like I say if it can be done from a child from a childhood perspective like I say that would just be instilled and ingrained in you when you go into adulthood so uh, I definitely think it's something that uh, that needs to be needs to be thought about uh, mm. for sure but again it's a relatively new sport for, for a lot of the UK people so you know whether in government those things will pass through will be another question yeah, yeah, fair. Well, let, let's let's talk a bit about your kind of you growing up then, and um, your let's talk about your dad because he's your head coach. Um, you know, I I, I personally I, I didn't I've never met my father, and um, uh, I I rarely kind of long for that relationship. But mm -hmm. the only time I really do is when I see those sorts of coach student relationships. Um, between kind of fighters and their and their fathers, like there, there's yourself, there's uh, there's Wonder Boy, you know, there, there's um, uh, a handful of people that uh, do have their fathers in their corners, and um, for me, that's you know, that's that that looks like it's it's a really quite a special and unique relationship. Um, would you agree? And and, yeah. and and is there is is there things about that that are quite special to you? Yeah, no, hundred percent. First of all, I'd like say obviously I'm sorry to hear about um, your situation. Oh, that's fine, man. I'm, but I'm um, cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think it just depends how you take it. Like Roy Jones Jr. had to le had to leave his dad. Floyd Mayweather had to leave their dad in order for their careers to sort of be successful. Floyd Mayweather then brought his dad back later on in his career. But um, you know, it can go one of two ways. You know, you can go where you know you completely hate your dad for forcing you to do these things, or you just learn to accept and understand that these things were done for the better for the better good. You know, and uh, sometimes you may not agree with certain things, but as long as your your dad is also, again, another point, your dad's also got to be open-minded to how things are evolving because it's not like the old days. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, a lot of things are changing, and you've got to be very open-minded to the things that are changing. But yeah, since a young age, you know, my dad's been uh, 
obviously very harsh on me, you know, five years old, uh, playing around, oh, look at this kid, oh, this is fun. And then a week later, no, you must train. <laughs> and I'm like, great, here we go. So no, 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 no. Baltic no. Accent, yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, obviously, Things got very serious very quickly. So, uh, you know, got into, but you know, he made me a four-time British kickboxing champion. You know, I, um, I, I, I competed in a lot of judo uh, tournaments and you know, times where it's great to have that relationship with your dad where he helps pull you through adversity or he helps, helps pull you through those times where you need to just toughen up, you know, and you, you need to go, 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 through, go through the hard times and it helps pull you through it. And, and he teaches you, but in a very harsh way, you know, I was taught, it, it was a very, you know, old school way of teaching me, but it was very effective, you know. Um, obviously, you know, there was what he managed to separate, which was amazing, which has, has kept to this day, is the father and son relationship and the father and uh, uh, the, the, the coach and son sort of relationship, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, outside the cage, he's just my dad. We just could joke around, hang around. But then, you know, as a coach, we, we become like a very, you know, a very strong bond, but like we, we can just click and, and flow off of each other. We, we accept ideas, we learn our ideas off of each other. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and I think uh, it's just something that's just been slowly built over time. You know, there, there, there have been little disagreements, but you, you know, you figure it out, you, you, you sort it out among, amongst yourselves. And then, like I said, even myself, I've become more open-minded. I realize that some of the things he's telling me, like, you know, you almost feel like, because I've done it for so long, well, I know what I'm doing. But it's like, no, but he's got certain things that he, you, and when you start taking those things in, you realize, ah, oh, now hold on a minute. Like the, those things are really useful. But then on the same side, it's obviously there's new stuff that needs to be applied more than the old stuff as well. And then th that's where my dad's become open-minded to, to, to sort of figuring that stuff out and adding it to our game and that's why now it just becomes more and more and when you understand each other more now now you're older do you know what I mean that now you, you become a man and and uh, you, you're able to sort of relate with your dad even more so than, than when you were a kid you know even even when you're a kid you're just still learning a load of shit like whereas you know now you're sort of almost on the same wavelength it's like now you're both men and now he can give you lessons and, and stuff like that but now it's like almost like you can give him lessons as well you know what i mean you're sort of on the on a very similar wavelength that's why yeah. our relationship right now is the strongest that it's ever been and uh he's always been there for me during the toughest times and all the great times you know um he's been there through through all he's always meticulously studying my opponents meticulously looking at i freaking hate it sometimes i'm walking into the sitting room i'm saying dad you're not watching another fight of mine again bloody hell you know how many times have you seen that last fight with 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 me he's watching it a million times over to i'm talking the minute details to make sure that we can correct it and move forward but this is mm -hmm. why he's such an amazing head coach mm -hmm. you know this is why he will forever be in my corner and 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 forever be a, a massive influence on my career so uh you know and i feel like we're achieving stuff together you know when he was a fighter this was but he retired just before the ufc came about and i truly believe if he was to go and do that tournament he, he would definitely do very well there because yeah. he, he knew stuff that no one else really knew you know uh, which is why he's 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 done so well and obviously done so well um, with, uh, with with coaching me. So, yeah. it, you know, he, I I I love him. Like honestly, I feel like he's living part of his career through for like finishing out his career through me. You mm -hmm. know, but I enjoy that. I love that. I love that. We're able to. That's why I want him to experience everything that I'm experiencing. Yeah. I, I remember one vivid well one vivid memory that I have is that. Um, I felt very in the moment in my last fight and um, I just remember seeing like a flash of light like up and up up in the in the bleachers or in, in, in the stand somewhere and I could just see his grandparents just like sort of giving their like like almost like giving me their eyes and their and their spirit like like and I could see like ancestors with like with like freaking swords just Whoa. like rush at me like in a split second it's like very hard to explain I could see like a a rush just for like literally just a split second and I could just feel it I could feel that energy and I remember whispering to my dad I said dad like you know uh grandma and granddad are looking over us right now wow. we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna go and do this and i could see his face was like a bit like shocked in a way like he was like bloody well, this is when you went back to your corner no 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 this this is before we walked this, out oh right this is before oh, we wow. walked out even he was like bloody hell and then right as i walked into the crowd and everyone's booing i'm just embracing it and loving it but this is why i came in there so calm because i had the energy of my ancestors and my family wow. giving me that and it was it was weird but like like i say even that connection with dad like to be able to say that and then going into the fight you know and stuff like that now he, he's seeing everything it's like it's amazing that we're experiencing everything together and again long may it continue
Nice. And what did you think about that uh, Perth crowd? Is it Perth? It was yeah, Perth, yeah, Perth. Um, obviously, you're going, you're going into Tyson Pedro's backyard, you know, um, you probably expected some booze, but what, what, what did you think of the experience overall? Oh, I, I freaking loved it. They're ama amazing country, beautiful landscape. It's like a very, a very strong mix of America and the UK. You know, they all drive on the left side of the road, but the streets are very like America, like blocks, you know. But, um, you know, the people, are, like I said, they're absolutely lovely. The weather was absolutely amazing. 34 degrees, I freaking loved it. Uh, nice. And although there was booze, it's just showing support for their athlete. I, I, I applaud that. I applaud that they are so, they're getting so behind their athlete and they're so like entranced and like, you know, inspired by, by all these athletes coming out. They're, like, they weren't, they, you know, it just shows how much support they have for, for their homegrown athletes. And, and I respect that. So, you know, and not only that, they, they gave me a round of applause when, when I left the cage. So it just shows the amount of respect that they have for all the athletes. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and yeah, like obviously they just, they just get really into their fighting, which is amazing to see how many people really support fighting and MMA as a whole. So, you know, the sport's clearly grown massively. So yeah, um, I loved every, every minute of it. I loved the booze and I loved the cheers. <laughs> I loved everything. Brilliant. And no doubt you would have had... Um uh, the hometown crowd on your side uh, had you uh, won your campaign for a fight at UFC London this weekend. Um, obviously, you're going, but you're going as VIP, as you mm. rightly should be if you're not going uh, to fight. Um, what, what, what fights are you uh, most excited about seeing live? Obviously, the main event. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Leon Edwards and uh, Kamara Usman. I mean, you've got uh, Gaethje and Fazeyev uh, is another really, really uh, high-level fight. Um, to be honest, I, I do want to see how Christian Leroy Duncan's going to do, being the the former Cage Warriors middleweight champion. That'd be another good fight to see. Lerone Murphy as well. Just you know, there's so many good, great fights. Gunnar Nelson's the card. making yeah, Gunnar Gun uh, Nelson as well. You know, it's against Brian Barberina. Barberina, yeah, that, yeah, he's he's, yeah, uh, he's, he's a crazy he's been, guy. He's been, moving up in, he's been moving up in the ranks lately. You know, he's, he's been a bit of a dark horse lately. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He's slowly been nabbing away at, uh, at guys that have been at the top. So you know, he's been doing really well lately. So. So yeah, the, there's there's a Amerikani as well. Yeah, Amerikani. Yeah, like we've 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 got Jack Shaw as well. Yeah, Jack absolutely Shaw, amazing. Yeah, Ma amazing athlete. I would love to see how he does at featherweight because he he did really well at bantamweight. But you could see obviously he was saying he was depleting himself. So him full fresh ready to go. I think featherweight is going to be a real problem. So we've got like I say, we've got a whole host of amazing athletes there on the card, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be amazing for me to see. I, I really can't wait for. Uh, to, to go and actually be a spectator at a show as well. Brilliant. And, and can I hold you to uh, FaceTime when we're doing our actual UFC watch along stream here at DR Sports, you know, while you're there, you know? Oh, 100%. We'll, 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 uh, we'll get your thoughts get, on, get, on get, it get, Give me a cheeky little there. call, mate, and we'll, we'll get it going. We'll, we'll hear a couple of cheers from the crowd as well, yeah? <laughs> Love it. Well, um, it's, been, it's been amazing talking to you. Your, your, your story, the, the comeback king, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're embodying it, you know. Uh, long may it continue and uh, looking forward to seeing what you oh, do next. Oh, thank you so so much mate honestly i really appreciate uh you you having your time to, to 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 get me in here and you know ask me these questions i've had a really good time i really enjoyed it you are the man thank awesome, you man. thanks a lot my man awesome, okay. brother. Cheers. this week saturday on dr sports we're going to be hosting a very special watch along it's ufc 286 and we're going to be doing a watch along to the big fight it is leon edwards versus kamara usman you've got to come and check it out live here on DR Sports. I'm going to be hosting it with our brand new MMA host, Zaki. We'll be giving you the lowdown on the fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, easy, bro. You ready? What's all that? What's all this? You said you're going to get stuck in. We're going to no, use no, yeah, he ain't signed up for that. No, no, no. What do you no. mean? You, that's, that's what we said we're going to do. Okay, we'll worry about Robbie in a sec. But listen, make sure you join us on Saturday evening from 9 o'clock, UFC 286, Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards, the trilogy fight. Who's gonna win? We'll find out on Saturday. Make sure you join us. Robbie, I swear we're gonna go live. Uh, uh, I'm tapping, I'm tapping. <laughs>